congratulations and welcome to Fright Fest. You must be very excited to get your first film screened here. I, I am really, really fired to have uh, to be at Fright Fest for the first time. It's it's um, uh, it's particularly exciting because I use Fright Fest as kind of my model for the investors. I kind of said to them, we'll launch it somewhere like Fright Fest. I never said Fright Fest because you know you you never know. But uh, but so to be here is massive validation for for me and the movie. And it's yeah, it's it's exciting as hell. It's great. And tell us more about Hallow's Eve. Um, well, the, the short pitch is it's a modern day estate gang find themselves caught up in a scenario that's a bit like a late 70s, early 80s slasher. Um, uh, but, it, it's, uh, but, it's a, it's, but it's got a lot of social undercurrents to it and, it's, and it deals with a lot of things. And hopefully it, it, uh, it, it pays homage to those movies, the movies of John I mean, it wears its influences on its sleeve. It's called Hallow's Eve, for God's sake. It's, I'm not trying to hide that. But it's but uh, but I'm I'm hoping that it starts in that framework and grows into something else and hopefully surprises people and intrigues them. And uh, what was what was the genesis of the story for you? Well, it, it's I mean to be honest that the the initial the initial idea had been kicking around my head for a long time. It's one of those little ideas that you think well yeah that would be that would be good for a, a low budget movie that you could do could do something with that. But it wasn't until until I, I, I suddenly had the idea to filter it through that John Carpenter vibe and that, that, that late 70s, early 80s. And this was two years ago. This, this was before Stranger Things and things like that were going on. So you know, hopefully we've, we've timed it right. Um, but I, as soon as it, I focused it through that, it, it kind of, yeah, it, the whole script just sort of, uh, you know, came alive for me. And I, was, and I sat in a coffee shop for like, you know, like, like four weeks and just bam, just knocked it out. And then took it to my sales, the sales agents that I know, and they they supported me all the way through, and we and we got a third of it shot off our own backs, and then went and raised the money and did did it. So it's um uh, yeah. So basically, it was one little germ of an idea that then just came into focus at the right point, and and off we went. And is, is it actually something important that I mean, you were lucky to have the connections with the sales agent, but when you're, you're writing a film with well, with a script in, with intention to obviously make into a film, do you have to think about the commercial aspects of you know what you're going to be able to do once you've made it, and do you have to write it with a, a thought of our audience is going to like this? Yeah, I think um, I mean that's a, that's an interesting question because I wouldn't I wouldn't say necessarily yes, but for me yes. I do, and I, I can't sit and write something if I'm not looking at it from an audience's point of view. And I'm always writing it from a, like, I mean, I think it's because naturally I'm, I quite like, the commer I mean, you know, what's going on lately, I'm not so sure, but in general, commercial films I've liked and, and I've, I've not, not been afraid of that. So I think my natural inclination is to think that way. Um, so for me, absolutely, I always do. But other, but other writers and filmmakers, maybe not. You know, so I mean, I think that's the, that's the, that's that's the great thing about filmmaking as an art form. You, you, you know, different people approach things differently and have different intentions and different that, and that's how it should be. You know, films should be different, catered differently. I know I have an, I have eclectic taste. I know that I can watch something that we consider art house and love it, and then I can go in and watch watch something extremely commercial and love it. And uh, and I think a lot of people are the same way. So let the more eclectic stuff happen the way it needs to happen. That's what. I've, was the working with the actors quite an organic process for you? Um, certainly was. Certainly was. I, because uh, you know, I've written a, a script that features, well, that revolves around a, an estate gang, a modern day estate gang. Now, you might not think this to look at me, but I have no experience of that myself. So I was, uh, uh, so so I cast it with people that I really, uh, really knew that I would be able to rely on to put, you know, be able to take the words that I'd done and I'd. Put a little bit of research into it, and I'd, I'd written some of it, and and I got some compliments from some of the actors, like yeah, yeah, that's right. But I but I told them, look, guys, you just you, let's let's just make this flow. Let's just make these this work out of your mouths and the way it should sound. Let's not, you know, you know, let's let's do it together. So so um, in that for that respect, for me, it was essential for it to be an organic process for my cast to set. And, and, and advice for for anybody else wanting to make a film for the first time. My advice, <laughs> my, well, my first advice is don't listen to anybody. My first advice is there's no right or wrong way to do things. Yeah, so whatever I say now, just ignore it. But I would also say um, uh, if you're going to, you know, making movies is an entrepreneurial effort. You've got to put everything, 
you, you know, you've got to put everything into it. So you've got to be prepared to do that. But also, I think my, the number one thing I would say to everyone is the, the biggest currency you have at, that, at the very start of your career, and if you're trying to get films off the ground, off your own back and off your own steam, the biggest and most valuable currency you have is goodwill. Don't ever take that for granted. Don't ever waste it. Don't ever destroy that. Just keep, you know, make sure people want to work with you and people want to, because when you need them to stay that extra hour, then they will. They'll happily do it if they want to work with you and they and they feel engaged with the process. Never, don't, basically, don't be an ass. That's what I'm saying. 